Good morning folks, Ron Bishop, Timaroo, New Zealand. Every morning I come online telling my story, my life story, 72 years I've had, over 72 years now. And uh, today I'm going to Waimati, a little place in New Zealand called Waimati, and I'm going to promote the place, I'm going to motivate some people down there. I've got an appointment with the mayor at, um, I must one this afternoon. I'm going to sit down and have a, have a yarn about it. Because they're arguing a bit down there, the councillors. There's a bit of a row going on. And I'm going to try and sort it out. Bang their bloody heads together or something. But we'll get it sorted. Don't you worry. And I've got Timaru sorted. I've got them all talking in town. Everyone knows who I am now. They didn't know before. And But this morning I want to talk to you about a club that's been formed in Timaru called the Yellow Belly Club. Now you know what a yellow belly is, don't you? A yellow belly is a is an eel uh, with a yellow belly. We used to catch them in the river. They're mainly in the freshwater uh, eels. It's not, mud eels are very black, but the yellow belly uh, eel is in the freshwater. Um, and so that's why. With you. Now yellow belly eels are very scared, right? They they got no guts. In other words, they 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 they're scared of of. They get other people to do their dirty work for them because they can't do it themselves, you see, because they're, because they're yellow bellies, right? It's called, uh, they, they've got no, they're not brave. They haven't got courage, you see. They lack courage. They're full of fear. Okay. But anyway, I want to talk about some of these yellow bellies this morning, okay? There's a letter in the newspaper, a letter to the editor. Someone's praising a bloke in Timaru called Paul O'Rourke, who was a rep Chief reporter here for in Timaru for many years. Now he's a yellow belly, and the reason I call him a yellow belly is because I went to see him once. He doesn't like me, uh, and I went to see him to find out why he didn't like me and why he wasn't printing my letters and why he was unsubscribing to uh, my emails, which was addressed to the editor of the Timaru Herald, and he would unsubscribe. You see, so obviously he had an issue with me. Now, if someone's got an issue with me, I like to sit down with them and sort it out, you see. So I went to see this Paul O'Rourke. Didn't know. I, I've never met him personally. And, and, and we got and sat in the room and I said, Paul, why don't you like me? And he just was silent. And then he got up and walked out. Walked out of the room, left me sitting in the room by myself. And he wouldn't print my letters. So I went back to see him again. I had a complaint to make about the council. He said, well, that's your complaint with the council. Take it up with the council. Don't come to us. And he walked away. All right? Left me sitting there. Now, yesterday, another bloke did the same thing. I don't know whether you know this guy or not. He's a little short, fat fella. Uh, his name is, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ted Sullivan. Edward Sullivan. Ed Sullivan, yeah, yeah. His mother, mother was Orally and his father was Ted. They lived behind us here, just behind us, and, and with the, the cops living now. Ted and Orally, nice people. Uh, but they had this son called, called Ed, and he's a big shot, you see. He used to own the Hydro Grand. Him and his mates bought the Hydro Grand, you see. <laughs> and they sat on it for 10 years. I went to see him one day about the Hydro Grand, because I, oh, about 25 years ago now, I took a took up a big collection. We were going to develop the Hydro Grand, and I've got a very keen interest in the Hydro Grand. So I went to see this guy, F. Sullivan, and you know what he said to me? You've got no money. Why did he come and see more, me for? He said, you've got no money. I said, how do you know that? He said, because we've checked you out. Bloody hell, check me out. Who the hell knows how much money I've got? How can you check someone out to see how much money they got? Oh, it's a clever little bugger. Anyway, I saw him yesterday. Uh, I think he's going to go to jail. He's supposed to go up for the court because the government is, uh, fraud squads uh, had him up for fraud. Him and that another bloke, uh, what was his name? Alan Hubbard. You know, Alan Hubbard, he used to have a lot of money once uh, before he died. That's before the, they killed him in the car accident. But him and, him and Sullivan were mates, you see. Them, uh, um, this guy, a little, he's another little fat fella too. Uh, what was his name again? 
But anyway, Malcolm, richest man in the South Island. He was. And, uh, well, I wasn't a bad bloke. He, I could sit down and talk to the guy. I, I had a, quite a few conversations with him. He gave me 10 bucks once uh, when I was started raising money to develop the hydro again. He gave me $10 out of his wallet. Uh, and he said, isn't it terrible? He said, I, I, I manage millions of dollars and, and I can only find $10 in my wallet. <laughs> yeah, poor bugger. They shafted him. Oh, they all hung on him to, to him because he had money. Who else have I got on my list of yellow bellies? I've got a list of yellow bellies here. Who are they? Uh, Peter O'Neill, he, he's the manager of um, the Timber Herald. I think I've only met him, was it twice? And both times he was very rude and wouldn't speak to me. I've tried to ring him up on the phone, he won't speak to me. Um, but he's been with the Timber Herald for about years. I don't know these people, you see. I don't know who they are. They won't sit down and talk to me. You can't work out how to, uh, who they are if they won't sit down and talk to you. Who have I got here? Uh, the guy that owns the Hydro Grand now. Is he, what's his name? I can't remember what his name. Who's the guy that owns, owns the Hydro Grand now? It's, it's a company that owns it. But a bloke, there's another bloke there that thinks he owns it. He's arrogant too. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, oh geez, he swore at me in his, in his office. Um, he's a part of the Yellow Valley Club. He won't come out and speak to me. Um, who we got here? Kevin Pateman, that's another guy. Oh, he, he, racing car driver, you know? I've known Kevin for years, not a bad little bloke. We used to get on quite well together. Uh, until he started bloody speculating in property. And he's got this property on Church Street. Falling down, bloody eyesore. Used to be a um, garden centre there. And he owns it and he's just sitting on it, doing nothing. And it's a bloody eyesore. <sighs> How many, and he's he got another mate called Peter, what the hell's his name? Peter Wilson, yeah. He, he's Bruce's son of Reed and Wilson. He's another speculator. He's got this pub called the, uh, uh, the uh, Dominion. And, and it's bloody paint falling off it. Oh, God, it's a bloody disgrace. But these guys are all yellow bellies. I've left messages for them to ring me, but they never ring me. They're too bloody scared of me. I don't know why they're scared of me. Well, before I go, I must tell you about the biggest yellow belly in town, Christine Bennett. But I don't think she's in town now. I think she had to leave town. Her name's Christine Bennett. She's a woman. Dishonest, you wouldn't believe that a woman could be so evil. Now, it's all online. It's all there. I've, I've got pages and pages of it online. I've been writing about it. I've been talking about it. The Employment Law in New Zealand. Christine Bennett. God, what a yellow belly she is. She used to work for me, and, and I sacked her after I gave her about 20 months grace before I sacked her. Uh, and, and she left her vacuum cleaner with me. Uh, when I sacked her, she forgot to pick up a vacuum cleaner because the vacuum cleaner was down in my office. Instead of coming and getting it herself, she sent two little kids down. I said, what do you kids want? They said, oh, we, we wanted to pick up the vacuum cleaner the, of M M Nana, Nana's vacuum cleaner. So they, they come to pick up this bloody vacuum cleaner. You see, cyber, see, cyber bullies and, 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 and yellow, members of the Yellow Valley Cup they won't front up. This Christine ben Bennett spent $40,000 on a lawyer. And you know who a lawyer was? The little flat, fat man. Uh, I'm telling you about. From Raymond Sullivan and McGlashan. That was her lawyer. She had, she had a dozen of them or so working for her in there. Um, they were working with Christine Bennett. Got $40,000 they charged. Over 40000 and I had to pay Christine Bennett over $35,000 because she was going to sell my house, or she told my wife she was going to sell my house. You see, these yellow bellies, they always go at my wife. They attack my wife, right? Because she's 80, and I'm 72, and she's 80, and they know that if they get at her, that's the only way they can get at me. See? But we're starting to wise up to this. I've got a good cop now. His name's Bob. Bob Cartney, you know? Bloody good bloke. He rang the missus last night. And wanted to know how she was, and, and what, did she have any more phone calls? Because they used to ring her up at night and 
you know, and have her on, you know, and, and Margaret's a nice lady, she gets sucked into all these uh, people that get on the phone and ring her up. Um, but Bob rang up, bloody good bloke Bob, he's, he reckons he's on, he's on to these uh, kids, there are only kids of course, that are coming onto my website and making all these smart remarks, but we're, we've got them sorted. Now listen, i got to go, oh jeez, what have I eaten? I mean, I ate my tucker too fast, I must slow down. Five to nine, I got my pills sorted out too by the way. Jeez, I was, I was angry yesterday, I went into the... Uh, get my pills, because I'm on pills, you know. It's the only thing that's holding me together. I got pills for my peeing, because I can't, because I had cancer in the prostate, and I, I'm on pills for that. But my peeing's a lot better now. I can, I can, I've got a pretty good flow now. Before, I was just used to dribble. And I couldn't turn the bloody thing off. But now, but now I can, you see, because I'm on these little white pills. Now, I got the pills for my brain, because I've got, Bipolar disorder, that's what they told me, that I get happy and sad. And I'm not allowed to get happy and sad, you see. So they put me on these pills to keep me on an even keel, you see, so I don't get have any big grandiose ideas and want to build big hotels in Timaru and do all these things that are impossible to do. Um, and what else am I on pills for? Oh, my blood pressure, you see. I, I get high blood pressure because when I get angry, my blood pressure goes up. So, well, I went into the chemist down here at Highfield and got my pills. He said, well, Ron, there's no more. You need another script. You've run out of scripts. You have to go back to the doctor and get another script. God, I was angry. And, and I'd, I'd run out of these pills that keep my blood pressure down because I've got high, I get high blood pressure. And if I, it gets too high, I'm going to bloody have a heart attack. So I've got to fix that. Now, uh, so I went in there, um, and no bloody pills. So anyway, I went down to the doctor's off the back of this. I'll go and get my, because I, I don't want to have a heart attack, right? I've got to get my bloody blood pressure down. So I, I went down and I saw the nurse, went straight in, she gave me a blood pressure. She said it's too high, dangerously high, 170 something. She said, I said, well, I'm off my bloody pills because I can't get my pills. The reason is I, ca I can't get my pills because I didn't need another prescription. And I said, I don't think I need any pills because there's nothing wrong with me. You know, I'm as good as gold. I never feel better in my life. She said, that's because you're on the pills. If you go off the pills, then your life will, life will be a mess. So I go along with whatever they tell me. She took my blood pressure too high. Uh, and then she took it later on. About afterwards, sorted a few other things out in the, in the doctor's room. She, she took it again and it was right down to 150. But it's got to be down to 140. And I said, well, the reason it was high is because I was stressed because I couldn't get my pills. And she said, that'll be right. So if you're going to get your blood pressure taken, make sure you're calm and you haven't had a belly argument with your wife or something like that or someone. <laughs> make sure you're nice and calm. But yeah, that's it. Uh, got the pills sorted. What else am I going to talk about? Nothing else, really. I better get this online because I've got to go and see Murray. Murray's my, I rang him up. He's my, my, my favourite uh, brother-in-law, Margaret's older brother, Murray, bloody good bloke. He's sheep shearer, same as me, used to be sh sheep shearing. Uh, he's old, uh, he's over 80, 82, 83 now. Uh, so he's 10 years older than me, um, but a bloody good bloke. And, and Christine's nice too, I'll go and see her. We'll have a cup of tea, tell a few lies, you know, and see Sean and all, all, my, all my rallies. They're good kids. Wonderful family. And I go and see this bloody mayor in, in Wyoming. He don't know what his name is. John Coles, is it? Is that his name? Some name like that. He said, I, I think I met him once, but we'll see what he's like. And listen, I'll let you know in the morning how I got on, okay? Bye-bye.